Now, Sorry, y'all. I'm just trying to get the word out so that people know we're live. Give me just a second. And we'll get this fired up. All right, get out of here. What? Man, alive. This uh, alternative mic thing for my closed captioning is being a real pain tonight. I know the young kids know how to do this way better than my old behind. All right, got the word out on Twitter. Let's get this started. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Welcome to this week's Bonnet Chronicles. I'm your host, Kalari GXC. It is December the 3rd, and you know, it's been a crazy week. I'm not even gonna lie, I took a bit of a break from twitter after announcing that i was going to come on tonight but my nerves are afraid y'all between people who want to make excuses for why they can't do their bare minimum to help save our human rights to just the consistent rash of white male outrage i'm not even going to sugarcoat this at this point because it's become so normalized that people don't even bat an eyelash Two days ago, we had a school shooting, which for me makes me more grateful that I pulled my son out of traditional schooling years ago and put him in virtual school and it's just like a regular school. But the fact of the matter is having your child go to school and not being able to hug them when they get back because some asshole with easy access to guns and too much rage and no outlet for said rage is unacceptable and we have this crumbly kid who went into school here in oxford michigan and took lives and he is one of many you can cite so many just over the last five years of incidents of people with ease of access to weapons they should have lives lost to this and it's beyond time for gun control measures. And welcome to the chat, Terry Antico. I hope you had a good day and I hope your weekend's starting off right. But the problem I see with guys like Kyle Rittenhouse, with guys like this Crumley kid, is that too many of us have just said, well, it's an American standard. It shouldn't be. Civilians should not have access to weapons. And minors should not be able to get their hands on a weapon like that. When you look at the way that both of these boys were raised, you see their MAGA kin telling them that, oh, you got to believe in God, but you got to do things this way. You got to support the right, even though you... A lot of them are just angry and confused because they're constantly told what to do and what not to do, but they're not listened to. They're not nurtured, and they're definitely not cared for. And it kills me when you see publications posting a picture of this murderer as a child praying. And it's like, that doesn't do nothing for me. In fact, if I can be 100% honest, over the last few years, when somebody tells me that they're Christian in this country, I no longer get a sense of peace. 
I wonder what bigotry are they going to indulge in? What hatred are they going to indulge in, period? Are they gun owners? Do I have to fear for my safety? Christianity used to be a symbol of peace for me. Now, American Christianity has completely warped that feeling for me. Why? Because too many of you will put your hands on the Bible and your hand on a gun and think that's natural. You will sit in church and act like you care about the Ten Commandments, but have no problem thinking about blowing away your neighbors, blowing away anybody that doesn't look like you, pray like you, act like you. So spare me. Anybody wants to get offended tonight about me saying that about Christianity right now because American Christianity, because I don't have the wherewithal to know about other countries right now. I haven't been able to travel, but the only country I've been to besides here is Canada, and I felt safe there. No, it's homegrown. Y'all's nonsense have made me leery of you. And welcome to the chat, G Feldman. Welcome to the chat, Beans. I'm just so over people. Like, oh, how can you say, don't lump all Christians? No, I'm lumping all of you this time. Because of the fact of the matter is, your demographic right now are the ones raising these little freaking mass shooters and school shooters. And you want to talk about radicalized other faith. You want to go on about the Middle East all the time. I grew up during the 80s and the 90s. I remember how people had so many anti-Muslim sentiments and still do. You just want to talk about how they treat their women. Look no further than our own American homegrown evangelical cult who want to force women to have babies that they can't take care of, put themselves through. I, I'll tell you this. I think it's real funny that we have a Supreme Court justice who seems to think that, oh, a woman could just have a baby and put it up for adoption. Have you seen our adoption systems? And even better yet, as somebody who's actually given birth, the stress and strain that that puts on your system, it's not for everybody. And not everybody wants it. And nobody should be forced to do something that they physically and mentally cannot handle. One of the scariest moments in my life, even though it ended up becoming the best moment of my life, was having kiddo because I never had a kid before. The only time I was pregnant before him, it didn't carry the term. So having him came with so many emotions, but the main emotion was fear. Being anemic, my blood doesn't clot the way normal people do. So I was fearful that I would end up having a kid and dying on the hospital table. And with the way mother mortality rates are, especially for black women, I had every right to be scared. So to have any kind of legislation that tries to force me into something that I would not want to put myself through unwillingly is not right. But some of you don't think on that level because it doesn't concern you or it's the not in my backyard mentality when it comes to bodies and you just need to get over it and i'm sick and tired of people waiting so we have to organize protests where you can get your instagram protest pictures versus organizing votes and this week was full of hyperbolic white women i'm gonna get to that tonight because some of you were so out of pocket that i had to block i had to unfollow and block somebody i used to respect because she decided to allude to the underground railroad for what's going on in texas what could end up happening in arkansas and florida and all these states run by little dick gop assholes and instead of saying you know what i'm gonna organize voter strategic stuff in these states so that we can save our rights. No, no, no. She's plotting for our Underground Railroad. And let me tell you two things wrong with that statement right there. First of all, her demographic, and I'm including the men in this, are the reason why we're having these issues with them attacking Roe versus Wade. Because they put that orange goon in the fucking White House in the first place, and it was all a part of Ms. McConnell's long haul plan. Y'all didn't learn from 2010. You thought President Obama was just going to be the magical Negro because you didn't listen in basic civics and you thought the president could do anything. You ignored when McConnell blocked Merrick Garland, whose name has been in everybody's mouth this week, and I'm going to call y'all out for that nonsense too. 
but he was supposed to be a Supreme Court justice. Some of you far left brats, and I hate even talking to you because you aren't worth my time at the kitty table of politics, but you wanted to bring up Ruth Bader Ginsburg not retiring. Let me tell you something about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She saw the writing on the wall. She knew she was the last defense because when we had a Democratic president, we still had goons blocking his nominations. She weighed the odds of if she retired, how slanted the courts would be, and she stayed. She shouldn't have had to, and I will agree with that. She shouldn't have had to stay until her death. All things considered, she should have been able to retire in peace and tranquility with all the good she did. But she knew this country was going to fuck up, and they fucked up in 2016. She couldn't retire. So all of you soothsayers who think, oh, she should have retired, what would you have done if McConnell would have got his Supreme Court handy-dandy magic act sooner? You don't think about that stuff. You sit home. You make excuses. I lost a follower yesterday over excuses. Because black men seem to think they want to try me on this now, too. I don't care if you look like me or not. That's why this whole topic tonight is going to be about pragmatism. Because some of you think all black people are pragmatic. Some of you think all of us think on the same level. We don't. We're not a monolith. I'm going to show you how pragmatism works for me and how some black pragmatism might work for other people. Because depending on how we were raised, depending on who we were raised by, depending on our region, our mentality can be different. And maybe you'll understand why what I say is definitely different from, from some of them black blue check marks. And why they so easily shill for the Okie Doke squad. But this follower, former follower, got an attitude with me, blocked me because I wasn't having his BS. Because I made it clear that I don't trust any Democrat right now talking about 2024 when next year is very important. I don't trust anybody who's trying to put VP Harris into any position but the path to the presidency. And I sure as heck don't trust anybody talking about voter suppression. Because right now, the biggest challenge to our voter rights are people who sit home. The people who have no voter suppression targeting them, who swear to God that they're blue. The blue wave emojis, the vote blue no matter who types, who don't do their due diligence. Y'all ain't talking about organizing voter drives in states that you're not in, but you're way in on every fucking race like it's you're a political analyst and expert. Save some of that energy you have for telling people, not all white people, and get to organizing in states that need your help. We have key races in every single state next year that need your attention. And it doesn't mean donating money all the time because I don't know about you, but I've been team broadcast for the longest time, and I can't afford to donate to every race. But there are plenty of things you can do to help the cause that will do so much. Text banking, if you can't, phone bank. Phone banking, if you can't. Canvassing what's is safe, and if it's not, making sure that your state mail-in and aptitude and early ballot measures are known so that you can help people who might not feel like standing in line, but still want to do their basic civic duty. There's absolutely no excuse anymore. None. Too many people want to hit me up with voter suppression. And for the few marginalized that are hit by voter suppression, they still do their due diligence. You don't think Georgia under Kemp was hit with some ridiculous thing? They tried to put a ban on passing out water. So miss me with the excuse about voter suppression. They're constantly trying to redistrict in that state alone to, to influence the vote. But black people don't play. That's how we got Warnock. That's how we got Osaf. That's how we're going to keep Whitmer. But we can't do it alone. And some of you act like you still have the luxury, but we have seen what your apathy can bring us. We have seen what your fakery can bring us. And some of you need to understand what practicality means because you want to be like black women. You say vote like black women. You say you got to listen to us, but you really don't because you don't understand that for us, voting isn't a matter of who we like most of the time. Voting isn't a matter of purity. It is the people who will do the least harm to our community while taking care of all of us because it's 
beyond just our needs. I would love to act like I ever thought I had the luxury to vote based on just my own priorities. I've never had that. And I have been voting consistently since, since 1995. Some of you just don't seem to understand the importance of voting beyond you. You don't think, well, I don't have a kid school age. I don't have a kid at all. Why should I care about the school board elections? As we've seen from the constant TikToks of white people yelling about their kids wearing masks but don't care about safety protocols, that's why kids are being shot up. From the people who want to talk about CRT, even though that is not taught in public schools. But anything that has to do with African American studies now, or blackness, is CRT to these idiots. If you want better, you have to exercise your basic civic duties. And if you don't understand how powerful the right to vote is, just look at how hard the GOP are working to suppress our votes. I'm just so tired of people not understanding pragmatism. Because for me, it started when I was young. My grandmother from early on would tell us the stories of our ancestry. She would tell us about family members who were lynched just exercising their right to vote. One of the first things I remember her telling me when she brought me to the ballot box the first time. It was at my elementary school, so I remember this. Plain as day, I was young. I was like, why am I here? Why am I watching you vote? What is the point of this? And she made it clear. You need to vote because they don't want us to. And if you don't, somebody will take that right from you. And that stuck with me. I told kiddo the same thing. And he is ready for when he turns 18 to start doing his civic duty because it does matter. And for some of you, you've never realized how some of us literally didn't have the right to have a ballot, to have a voice, to be recognized as human beings. And females should know better. There are still movements trying to restrict the female right to vote in our country because that's how archaic and ass backwards some of these Christian idiots are. So I am sorry, y'all. I do not take excuses anymore for why you won't do your basic civic duties. And I don't want to hear any more hyperbolic statements about running systems to help women get abortions. You know what will help women be able to get their choice? Having legislators who actually see us as human beings. Having people who recognize us beyond our gender and capability to carry a child. But to get that, you have to vote. And to do that, you have to be a little bit more politically invested than I heard on Twitter or something. Too many of you don't have practicality or pragmatism. That's why you fall for chaos agents. Last year during the primary, we had several of them. Yang being a perfect example of that. I don't know how many blue hat emoji types I had to mute. If not all out blocked because they were like UBI this and UBI that. I'm like, okay. He said something you like about UBI. What about the people that can't even think to live on a UBI because they're disabled? People like me. I have a mental health issue and disability supplements a lot of my income while I write. UBI would not help my family. UBI would make my life worse. But they don't want to hear anything like that because they're like, it's free money. There is no such thing as free money. I'm telling you as somebody who used to work in finance, you need to get that vernacular out of your system. Somebody has to pay for it. Somebody has to work to make that work. Y'all fall for pipe dreams and then get mad when your non-experienced chaos agent doesn't even get play at all. I wasn't even sweating Andrew Yang. But he wasn't even the worst offender. We have Mima, which a lot of our blood and tooth types are still trying it. Y'all will get a block really quick from me with your nonsense too. A lot of black so-called moderate plagmatists fell for her. I'm going to let you know something about our group. Besides, we're not a monolith. Depending on how you were raised, especially if you, like, I know it doesn't seem like it because, like I said, now that I'm adult on my own, team broke ass. 
I pay my bills. I'm lucky if I have enough at the end of each month. And this is not to ask for anything, y'all. It's just the reality of being grown. Having to take care of responsibilities. But the fact of the matter is, I grew up in a very comfort life. My grandparents made a lot of money. They made sure that we were taken care of for as long as they could until my mom decided when I was a teenager, she didn't want to live like that anymore. She wanted to be on her own, and then that nightmare started. But when I lived with my grandparents, I learned a lot about how the mindset when you have money is. And when you're raised with opportunities and a different mindset that you really have to unlearn, you start seeing who you have to be adjacent to to keep that structural power. And a lot of black blue check marks, they've had that life where they went to schools where they might not have been the majority. Sometimes I was the only black face in all my classes. Some of them might have went to all black prestigious schools. There's not that many of them. But there is a, a, a separatist mentality when you have money that you can't shy away from if you know. And a lot of them don't have the ideals of, I need to think beyond me. That's why they go hard for somebody like Nima because they see a position within her cabinet. Because she's going to need people who can puff her up and chalk her up and do their work. They don't want somebody like VP Harris because VP Harris is going to work whether you work with her or not. She doesn't need stunters. And sadly for me, a lot of these black blue check marks are just that. They come from well-to-do roots. And a few that don't have enough what they think financial cushion to where they can fake the funk. So to me, I can't trust them. So when you say vote like black woman, which black woman? Do you even know who you're propping up? Because some of us sister girls, even though not a lot of us, 94% of us vote consistently, but there is another 4%. 1% of that, and I'm trying to be jailing nurse, who try to be MAGA too because it's lucrative to shuck and jive for that nonsense, even though they know they're not respected. Nobody cares about them, but they can sell a book or two. But you got that 3 or 4% of others who will show for anyone that they can get that leg up for. And you have to be wary of those. That's why I say you want to know about pragmatism. It depends on your region. You don't know who you're going to vote for. Somebody who votes in the South pragmatically is not going to be the same as somebody who votes in the West, Midwest, or even Upper East Coast. We have different sets of values depending on our region. And survival it's about the only key factor that a lot of us black moderates have. We want the candidates that will do the least harm to our communities and maybe will benefit our communities a bit better. But we're realistic that we have to navigate white supremacy. What do you think? And I'm not knocking President Biden. I am grateful that we have somebody responsible in charge again. Somebody who actually cares. I cried the other day at the warmth that the White House gave for Christmas because I missed that feeling of feeling like we have safe adults running stuff again. But the fact of the matter is the reason why Biden got the black back in is because we knew we had to navigate white feelings. And if you don't like hearing that because it hurts your feelings and it's not all of us, you are listening to the wrong cast at this point because I'm tired of coddling your feelings on that. If you're not willing to face the reality, don't bother me anymore. I'm tired of having to deal with people who don't want to hear the truth. But the reason we had to stand behind President Biden was not only because his track record spoke for itself, but because y'all replaced one of our best presidents with a freaking predator who couldn't read. Who literally both sided white supremacists, who caused the pandemic that is still taking lives because his idiot brigade refused to mask up, refused to get a vaccine that he still wants to take credit for, 
won't tell his people to do the right thing because the fucking right are talking out their face. They can't make it seem like this current administration is doing the right thing. So they will do their darndest to impede things. But when they're not stoking their base to stay sickly and cause mutations and variants, they're throttling them up, getting them fired up, and giving them access to weapons of death. So if you are tired of this situation, I need you to understand pragmatism because as a pragmatic voter, even understanding that I can't stand these shoot them up, pretend like I'm a good Christian jerks, I want to vote to make sure their lives are better too. That's the reality of the situation. I don't have to like them to want their lives to be comfortable because when our lives are comfortable, maybe they'll be less likely to fire up their pickup truck or whatever their transportation, cross state lines and murder people. Maybe we can get focused on proper legislation for police funding because instead of defunding the police, we need funding to read out the rot get better training, get social workers in there so that they can handle calls that are not criminally based, especially for what mental health calls. There is so much overhaul that we should be getting done on a state-to-state -state basis, but we can't because you won't do your bare minimum. And it has to go beyond you. And you have to realize that even when we do our best sometimes, we don't always win. That doesn't mean you give up. That doesn't mean you throw in the towel. 30 years almost of voting for me. I've seen wins that I didn't think were going to happen. And I've seen losses that shouldn't have happened. Beyond what happened in 2016. Plenty of times there were races that just should have been a shoe in But people stay home. And that is the only thing that loses us votes, whether you understand it or not. Not the media, not polling. It is you deciding to not do your due diligence that costs us elections. You want to look at a Democratic loss. Don't blame them messaging. Blame the fact that this last four years wasn't enough to motivate you to always turn in a ballot. I don't know about you, but if I had any apathy beforehand about voting, which I've never had. You can look up my voting history. I have a good report card of doing my due diligence. But if I had any amount of apathy towards my basic civic duties, four years of that Keystone Cop fascism was enough. I cannot risk another four years of that idiot again or somebody worse, somebody more palatable as they destroy our democracy fully. We have to be our own soldiers to this and not foot soldiers for fuckery y'all, but actually soldiers to protect our democracy. Stop waiting for black women to save you. Our capes are tattered. Our shoulders are tired. And we shouldn't have to burden the stupidity of your family members, especially if you're not going to help us. Some of you so-called Democratic women, and I'm calling out my sister girls because I don't even know where to start to talk to white men sometimes. Some of you get it, and I don't have to say anything to you. I don't have to worry about you not alling or coming to me with the whatabouts. But a large percent of y'all... I just, I can't. I can't consistently try to reason with somebody who already thinks they know everything. Or somebody who thinks they're experts so they can do something that they've never done better than the rest of us. Who will argue with people who actually have the wherewithal and the knowledge of us. So I'm talking to you white women because a lot of you jump in my mentions. A lot of you DM me. A lot of you have stuff to say about what you can do. Organize. Stacey Abrams, Jamie Harrison did not lie when they said we can out-organize the GOP's fuckery. But we need all hands on deck. And like I said, I understand the people who can't give dollars to this all the time. It is not easy. I would love to have it where I could just donate to every campaign. But during December especially, 
any extra funds I have goes to charity stuff. Because I would much rather make sure a family can eat, a kid may be able to get a Christmas gift, over worrying about somebody's campaign right now. But there are a lot of things we can do for campaigns that will help them out. Time is precious. And some of the time that y'all waste arguing with people online could be used to help spread the word and get people voting in campaigns that most people want to write off. I'm so sick of listening to the media doom and gloom. And that was all week as well. Along with the school shootings and all the rest of this American homegrown baked fuckery. And if you're tired of the way the media continues the cycle of fuckery, tune them out and get focused. We all need a proper strategy on how we're going to handle our state and local legislators. I'm lucky right now. And I don't act like that luck won't run out if I'm not vigilant. I've got a good governor. I've got decent representation on both the House and Senate level in my district. But I'm right next door to one of the squad rooms. It's so bad that I seriously think people are trying to get me to run against her. I've had so many groups form. My DMs are a mess from them. We're trying to strategize how to get her out because she's a waste of a spot. And it doesn't help that not even that far from us, we have red districts. We have districts that are just led by people who don't seem to want to bat an eyelash to the fact that a school just got shot up. It's tiring. And I want to see changes happen that will help benefit all of us. That's why I don't give up. And here in my state, we have mail-in ballots. So there is absolutely no excuse for you, if you live in Michigan, not to go to the state of uh, Michigan website, go to the voter board, register for permanent mail-in ballots. Even if you don't want to mail it in, even if you don't trust to mail it in, and you don't have to use the mail for that. Most places have a drop-off box. At least put your name on there so if you get sick or you just have it where you don't feel like standing in line, your voice can still be heard. Because if you're not voting, you don't have a voice. And if you don't have a voice, you don't have any right to complain when the GOP take over your area and roll back your civil rights because that's their plans. They have full-on embraced the ideology of, I want power for me, and I want good little foot soldiers that will help keep me in power and help my profits come in. It. They don't care about science. They don't care about their fellow Americans. All they want is a white Christian theocracy. Where women are forced to have babies that they can't care for and sometimes can, can't even fully carry. Where men can get a gun and just shoot up a school, a church, a concert, a movie theater. At willy-nilly, this is the kind of life that happens when we allow a certain party to push that standard unchecked. And the media, who seems to think, oh, it's okay if we normalize it, it's a good news story for us. Who cares if parents are literally burying their kids before Christmas? It's breaking my heart. Those parents in Oxford who can't look forward to a holiday that is already challenging because we are still in a global pandemic who now have to plan a funeral because we still have legislation that allows people to buy weapons and not lock them up properly so their kids get the handle to them and weapons that can murder people way too fast for civilians to be owning. I will never stop calling out the fact that we had proper gun laws back in 96, I believe, after Columbine. It wasn't 97. I know it was the late 90s that we put these laws on the books because Columbine had happened. And parents didn't want any worse. And it lasted for a bit. And then George W. Bush... When his idiotic glory got elected, 
And all of that got rolled back and taken away. And soon after Virginia Tech happened, several instances of mass shootings continue to happen to where they became so norm that the last four years seems like another day. Just another random day in America. And it has to stop. I am so sick of seeing families putting their babies in coffins instead of caps and gowns. As a black mom, I already worry about that from the police. I already worry about my son's future in a fucking racist-ass country. But you add the fact that gun violence is so normalized here that anybody who's a parent should be fed up. And we have people who want to run and write the legislation and get things passed to protect our kids. But they are up against a media who doesn't seem to care because they want a horse race because it's more interesting. And apathy from people who just want to sit home and hope somebody else can do it. We cannot depend on other people to save us. If you're tired of what's going on in Florida and Texas and Alabama and Arkansas, your neck of the woods isn't completely safe. If you've got representatives who are more known for their stunt, seeing you, Sandy, Miss Always on Camera, if you are more known for your stunts and not your legislations, if you are not a Lauren Underwood type of representative, your job needs to be on the line for somebody who can do it. Because it is exhausting being in a country that should know better, that has the resources to be better, that still isn't. It is shameful at this point now, y'all. It is ridiculous at this point that we have to say these things. And if you want to be pragmatist, if you want the kind of mentality I have, you have to be willing to vote. And you have to be willing to organize, even when it's painful. One of the things I like to be upfront with people is, it's a lot easier for me to be social online. How I am on Twitter, how I am on these Bonnet Chronicles, is because I put a barrier between me and people. I have extreme social anxiety. It doesn't rear its head as much because I don't interact with people on a face-to-face -face basis anymore. It doesn't drain me the way it used to. But it is a real thing that a lot of people suffer from globally. So when people say things like, oh, you should run for office, I thank them. I wish running for office meant I just go into an office, do the budgeting, do the legislating, drawing up, and signing a few documents. I could do that. But being a politician is doing all that public speaking and everything else you need to do with the public. And I don't believe you should have asked a job that important. I could never run for an office and not have my office open where people could talk to me. Because that's the kind of politician I want to vote for. That's the kind of politician we should be voting for. Somebody who you can call their office and get stuff done. Somebody who wants to do their job at home and in D.C. But too many of you don't think on that level, and that's why we have so many messes. And it is important from your freaking county clerk to your state senator to know who's representing you, what jobs they're trying to do, and what they're trying to get passed. How they vote on measures as well. Because when you do that, benefits your neighborhood. It benefits beyond your neighborhood for national stuff. And I don't think a lot of people understand that, but when we have a functioning House and a functioning Senate, the White House can pass things that benefit the whole country. But when we don't have states that want to play along, when we have holdouts, things get stalled. So many people want to talk about what's in and what's out of the Build Back Better bill. If you want better things passed in legislation like that, if you want to make sure that certain money is allocated to something that will help you out, you have to think beyond yourself. I was going on last week about the elder care thing. Even though I talk because I was in that situation not but two years ago, I no longer have to care for an elder. 
I'm fortunate that I'm no longer in that situation, but I understand from having to do it how important it is for people to have that extra. Just like as a parent, even though now I wouldn't benefit from the Head Start pre-K stuff, I look at it as if I had that option back when kiddo was that age, I would have jumped on it. And I think it's a great idea for parents to have that extra. You have to think beyond what only helps your household. Because voting for this current administration has helped my household. Getting that tax, I call it a refund because that's basically what it is. I'm getting my refund in bits and pieces instead of a lump sum at the beginning of next year. And that has helped my family out so much. Extra bills being paid so that I'm not stressed at the end of each month has been a blessing. And we can have more. But you have to vote for it. And you have to have a state that cares. And currently, some of us aren't living that life. And I want to see that change. And if you're with me, even if you don't live in Pennsylvania, who has a very heated race coming up, even if you don't live in Florida or Texas, you can do your part to help spread the word, organize, and get people to the polls because that is the only thing that is going to help us in the fight to protect Roe versus Wade. That's the only thing that's going to help us pass the George Floyd uh, police in that. That is the only thing that is going to help us pass for, uh, John Lewis's Voter Rights Act. There are so many bills languishing right now because we still don't have enough votes for them. But if you want those things passed and you want better, you gotta vote for it. I don't think I'm saying anything so radical, y'all. And I shouldn't have to keep repeating that. Let me see. I know that I know that's true, Beanie. I, I I felt such a weight off my shoulders when we defeated Trump. But I knew the momentary breather I got, especially since there were so many skies falling after right after the election was declared in Biden's victory. I had a woman argue me down to the point where I had to make a little short video to her. About how, oh no, Trump is going to seize power. Biden will never be inaugurated. I waited. I waited till inauguration day to see if she was going to come back and apologize. And they never do. The know it alls, the wannabe soothsayers that just knew that there was no way the new administration was going to be inaugurated. They had all that mouth and they were dead ass wrong. But doom crying is very popular, especially on social media. I knew I couldn't rest, even though we got. The administration that could do the job and are doing the job, despite what some of these whiners want to say. The fact of the matter is we can't rest still. Because unlike 2010, I refuse to let this administration go down because their House and Senate don't support them. Or worse yet, let the power slip back in to the GOP's hands. They should never ever have a House or Senate majority again. But they could very well do it because their base is still very radicalized and focused on whatever little bigoted mantra they can repeat to make themselves feel better even as they're dying from a preventable sickness. That is what we're up against. And what I've always loved about our party is we don't all think alike. We're not all cut from the same cloth, but we try to vote for the better party. But we have too many on our side that think they can fake their way through it. And the polling numbers don't lie. It's more white them especially got it together, voted whether their favorite got the nod or not. We get somewhere. You can't put this on anybody else. We see the polling numbers. We see the turnout. We already know that the white right, we can't reach them with our messaging. Some people think we could try. You can extend the olive branch. They will burn that olive branch and put a bullet in our head. No, I'm talking to the people with the blue rays 
the people that are constantly resisting, the people who swear up and down that they'll vote blue no matter who, but the moment somebody they don't like gets nominated or gets the nod, all of a sudden they got every excuse in the book. And no, I'm still not talking to the kiddie table of politics. Because 13% voter turnout? No, I don't know. You, you don't, I have nothing to say to you until you step up your voting thing. And even then. Cosplay Social is gone, and they're so badly, and they were the loudest these last few weeks about Merrick Garland, this and Merrick Garland. Let me tell you something about A.G. Garland, because this was a, 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 a bone that I had to pick with both followers and strangers alike this week on Twitter. The DOJ is not a circus or a sideshow. It is not your job to monitor his job. And how there are so many of you talking about, well, he's not doing anything. Oh, really? So you're not seeing the capital idiots, especially the ones who tape themselves committing a treason, going down. Several convictions have passed. They are putting so many indictments together. But because the news only reports what they want, you just acting like they don't, they're not doing anything. You got Joy Reid talking about, well, Merrick Garland isn't doing what he's supposed to do and, and using kiddie names for him. I wrote her off a while ago, too. That's why I say not all black moderates are the same, especially when they think they have an income cushion. But the problem I have with the what is Merrick Garland doing is that some of you fuckers didn't even think about the DOJ in, until four years ago. When we had howdy doody sessions, and then William, he was ready to c cause an apocalypse bar in charge, and you were all hands on deck afraid of that. And now that we have actual adults who want to actually do their jobs at the DOJ, who have to fight with all the appointees and justices that that kangaroo idiot put in, and you want Mayor Garland to what give you a memo on his day to day stuff? The man was going to be a Supreme Court justice until McConnell blocked him because McConnell was afraid of how thorough Merrick Garland is. So, yeah, I'm sleeping a little bit more sound at night that we have the DOJ being run by somebody who actually gives a darn about their job. And this is not a sideshow or a Law and Order episode. So you're not going to get to see everything that A.G. Garland does. And I can't believe I have to tell grown people that. But here we are. Because we have four years of a sideshow of nothing but carnival players who lined their pockets while you all fretted about what next chaotic thing was going to happen. And now that we have adults who just want to do their jobs, you still want a sideshow. Or you're bored. I am so tired of the toddler mentality some of you give off. Acting like... Oh, I'm not hearing enough from the AG. Why is it Trump in Pert Walk? Trump is probably not going to be Pert Walk. That's not how any of this was ever going to work in the first place. Even if he is finally indicted because he's got a few states coming after him for stuff. He is a former sitting president. They have protocols. He would have a hearing. Just like they pulled in Hillary for Benghazi, even though that was a bunch of BS. And speaking of Hillary, because I am fired up about this nonsense, a lot of you seem to forget that if you had just elected her, we wouldn't have been in this mess anyway. Mary Garland might have just been a Supreme Justice Garland instead. But y'all don't want to talk about that as you talk about what Mary Garland's doing. Mary Garland should have been on the Supreme Court. But some of you sat home in 2010 because, once again, i say it again. You thought Barack Obama was a magical Negro. You thought the president was a dictator. And when he didn't do everything that you thought he should have done as president, you sat your behind home and gave McConnell a bunch of power to block Garland's seat. Biden's parodic justice was putting Garland in charge of the DOJ. And I know that some of you who don't understand the function of the Department of Justice seem to think that he's not doing anything. But the Department of Justice is not a president's personal attack force. That was the problem with the last fucking guy. He thought Sessions was supposed to be his lapdog. And when Sessions didn't do it, he lost his job. 
Even Bar had to realize this guy's a little bit too crazy even for me. I had to resign. So you need to understand that the Department of Justice is supposed to be a neutral factor. It's supposed to be a thorough factor. It is not supposed to be a sideshow that you can watch 24-7. And shame on our media for pushing the narrative that the DOJ, because they are quietly doing their job, isn't working at all. And shame on yous who are pushing that narrative on social media, thus spreading it to people who don't even want to bother to realize what the DOJ even does. It's exhausting dealing with this level of ignorance on a constant basis. But as a pragmatic voter, even worse, watching this lead to apathy that could screw us all over again. Now, I'm sorry, y'all. I can't do this again. If you mess this up, if you mess up this administration's chances to undo the four-year damage of that last fucking guy, I'm out. I don't know how we're going to do it, but me and my family, we will leave. I can't do this anymore. It is exhausting. Think it exactly means exactly. He couldn't wait to get rid of Sessions because he he really, he didn't even know his role as president, but he definitely didn't know the role of the DOJ. And I'm seeing a lot of Americans who don't either. A lot of Americans who really think that Mayor Garland's job is supposed to go around arresting people. He has no say in who gets convicted on this. He can only help enforce the indictments against people. I just I wish more people would understand basic civics, will understand basic functions, or just shush when you don't know. But it's more easier for you to parent, well, Garland ain't doing anything. It's not fast enough. And I said it in a video the other day. I was giving him the same timeline as President Biden, who got inaugurated in January. Mary Garland didn't even get appointed to his job till March. That's an appointment in March, getting structured in, and then having the January 6th riot stone on his lap, all the fuckery of that last fucking guy in his administration, including the misappropriation of pandemic funds, which we can't... There is just so much that that man has to work through from the last administration, how dare you act like, oh, it, it should be done in, in less than six fucking months. The nerve of you people. I would love to see some of you who have all that mouth about what Mary Garland doing take a job where you have four years of cleanup to do on top of a treasonous crusade that threatened the lives of sitting politicians. And you have to catch, indict, and hopefully convict every single one of those individuals. And work out deals with the ones who may not have caused enough harm but have enough information to get the big fucking idiots that organized it. This is not a joke, y'all. Real convictions, real justice takes time and needs to be thorough so that it sticks. And the fact that I have to remind grown people of this is exhausting. But I'm not going to stop because, honestly, if I don't, the narrative that stuff isn't being done is just so loud that it will overtake everything we're trying to do to keep things on a good path. I want things to be better for us. But it is hard when you've got naysayers, do-something yellers, doom-criers, People with large platforms who just want to push their next book, talking about, oh, we're, we're, we've already lost. Russia's got their hands on us still. Everything's going to be bad. A little Miss Cressender, I'm probably butchering her name. I don't care at this point. Just going back and forth and blocking people who don't agree with her assessment that it's all bad, even though it truly isn't. Even though we have adults in the room. Even though they are working their ass off and not showing their behinds. They would much rather run hit pieces about people voluntarily leaving. Not being fired, mind you, but voluntarily leaving the staff to do other things. VP Harris's communications manager, Simone, is moving on. A lot of us are speculating that because of Stacey Abrams... Hopefully, historic 
run in Georgia, which I am hoping will lead to a win because Georgia needs her as a governor. A lot of us are speculating, and that is why Simone is moving on because she brings the win. When she puts her mind to it, when she gets away from the cosplay socialist and came over to us, she was strategic. And we need that in races like what's going on in Georgia. So maybe that's why she left. But even if she wasn't, the fact that the media ran a wannabe hit piece on why she decided to step down, we have so much of that to combat. Along with the so-called 43%. Go on about how, oh, VP Harris should run for Supreme Court Justice. First of all, you don't run for Supreme Court Justice, you idiots. I couldn't believe I read that tweet. How many people retweeted it? So even when I blocked the idiot who said it, screen caps to get past my block. Two things wrong with this is, A, VP Harris is on her way to the presidency, whether you like it or not. We're not going to let you do to her what you did to Hillary. But B, nobody runs for a Supreme Court seat. It is an appointment. And the only way to get an appointment that works for us women, especially since our rights seem to always be up for grabs, is to have a president that sees us as a human, have a vice president that supports that, and has legislators who actually see us as viable human beings. So stop trying to push our current vice president into something that she may not be appointed to because she will be doing the appointing if I have my say in this. I can't believe how fired up I have to be, but that is the amount of idiocy I've seen all week. That's why I took a break today. I love Twitter. I've met so many of you on Twitter and love the friendships I've fostered because it is a lot easier for me to talk to people online than it is face-to-face. But to say that y'all are enough for the exhaustion that I get from the amount of stupidity from grown people, from people old enough to be better, I can't say that anymore. It is no longer a reprieve to think only about my friends because there are so many grown people who should know better, who don't, who spread this misinformation, who push the narrative. And I'm sorry, your internalized misogyny? You need to work on that because you already screwed us out of potentially one of the best presidents we could have had in Hillary Rodham Clinton. I'm not going to let you do that for Kamala Devi Harris. There is no way. You will not sideline her to a role that doesn't fit her level of leadership. You will not mess this up for us black women who you swear you want to vote like But the moment it looks like one of us is on the path to the actual presidency because you didn't think that VP glass uh, shattering was going to happen and we did it. Now you're scared. Now you see the power. And you did. It should have been us. It could have. It could have been you in 2016. And I hate relitigating 2016. I want to let go with 2016, but I can't because every time I think about everybody we lost, Family, friends, to a preventable pandemic. Every time there's another bit of gun violence that is unnecessary. Every time I turn on the news for a brief moment before I'm like, I don't want to watch this. And I see that orange turn being brought up again. Because of you, he is going to stay relevant forever. Even if he's villainized in history books. Y'all gave him a place in the history books. And I will never forgive people for that. As somebody who loves history, my ire from the fact that that man will be known as a U.S. president, it just runs deep. The revulsion at this. And I cannot forgive the people who allowed this to happen. Not just the ones who willingly voted for that incompetent shitbag, but the ones of you who sat home because... Purity. The ones of you who wasted your vote writing in the comic book stuff. The people who didn't take this seriously. We suffered. And we are cleaning up a shit ton of messes still because of you. And you are doing it on the state level too. And you just got to stop it. Because if you want to be pragmatic, you have to realize that it has to be in your backyard and beyond. When it comes to your vote, you have to think beyond what just 
works for you as well. And you have to understand that doing the least harm to others benefits us all. Whether I like a person or not doesn't mean I wish harm on them. So when I vote, I vote for people who will do the best for all of us. And that is a mentality you should have if you want to be a practical pragmatist. I'm going to get ready to wrap this up, y'all. I cannot believe an hour has went by. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And for real, people really need to never let it slide again. Having somebody like Trump be known as president, I, I never want to see a historic low like this ever again. And we have to train. We have to train our brains to not listen to the media when they try to press the belt, not bring up voter suppression as an excuse, but to just do our due diligence. It really is important, y'all. Exactly. White men and white women, especially. And no more jumping into black people's mentions with the not all. If you're doing the right thing, good for you, but I ain't got a pat on the head or a cookie for you, do more. Organize. Help your communities and beyond. But stay out of black people's mentions wanting the pad on the back. Because I don't have one for you anymore. Not when your demographic is consistently voting to fuck us over. I just don't. But I'm going to wrap it up, y'all. For real. I'm going to get dinner started for Axiom and I. I love you all. I will see you all next Friday. I'm going to just relax. I really hope you have a good weekend. All right. I'm Bye.